Hello and welcome to another edition of the e-commerce Odyssey podcast. I'm here with Matt Putra and we are going to talk about um, how to manage cash flows for e-commerce businesses. So Matt, perhaps you could just introduce yourself. Why are you qualified to talk about cash flows? Thank you so much. Yeah, so my name is Matt. Uh, I'm a fractional CFO. Uh, before going on my own, I was CFO for a private equity group uh, in, in Canada uh, doing deals, uh, you know, $500 million in deals done over a number of years. Um, so just, you know, gained a lot of experience, made a lot of mistakes. And uh, that's why I'm qualified now to help people manage their cash flow. Excellent. So what, what is it? What do you mean by cash flow first? Yeah, so not net profit. Uh, by cash flow, what I mean is, you know, what do you have left over after you, you receive your cash and you pay out who you need to pay? What's left in your bank? And is that bank balance growing or decreasing? Okay. So what I mean, what kind of people, what kind of problems do, do companies have with cash flow? What is the typical kind of scenarios that I think the, the 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 one of the biggest problems that I see, especially this year with cash flow, is um to spend money on, on things that should give you growth and the growth isn't materializing. So that's a very, very current uh, thing that I'm seeing. Too much stock. Um, too much could be too much stock, could be too many people, could be you know, you acquired customers at too high of a CAC. Uh anything where you've invested in something that you think is going to pay off and the payoff hasn't panned out the way that you planned. That is the thing that I'm seeing the most this year, for sure. I think overall, what I see the most is um, people have a hard time forecasting. And so uh, when you, 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 you make an investment, you want to have an idea what's coming back and when it's going to come back. Um, and what I see is people getting in a pinch because they've either thought about it incorrectly or they didn't, they missed parts of the cost structure or the payback is taking longer than they thought. That's a very common problem. Okay. So what kind of, what kind of ways can people avoid these problems? I mean, what are you, yeah. what are you what's a strategy that you would, you would use? Yeah. You know, so first and foremost, what I would say, and especially today, but even, you know, even a year or two ago, what I would say is be conservative when you when you invest, uh, be conservative with what you expect to return, be conservative with what you're putting out. And so that's, you know, be conservative in buying inventory. Uh, uh, I saw this on LinkedIn recently, uh, a bad inventory buy costs you much more than uh, a failed growth initiative or or the wrong hire, for example. If you have inventory sitting on the shelf, there's just stacks of cash sitting on the shelf that aren't moving. So I'd be conservative with inventory. Be conservative with your expenses. Don't add people until you really need them. Uh, don't get the fancy office. Uh, stay in your garage for as long as you can. Um, but I'll just say, like, you know, the number one thing that I would say managing cash is be conservative. Um, you know, number two uh, is I would say go get money before you need it. So this is something where, you know, a brand's in good shape, have a good cash reserve, profitable, so that they, ah, we don't need any money. Um so what's happened over the past year is advertising has gotten a lot tougher. And so uh, the growth that one would normally see or the efficiency one would normally see in marketing has decayed a little bit. So then it's put a strain on cash. But now that this, this the strain on cash is there, it's actually harder to get money than it would have been a year or six months ago when things were looking really nice. Um, and so for most people, and, and even now, if your business is in a good spot, go find debt. If you're in the U if you're in the US, go to SBA, get an SBA loan. Uh, if you're in the UK or Canada, go go to a charter bank, go get a term loan, uh, you know, three, five year term loan. Even if you don't need it for growth, go get it now so that it's there. It's an insurance policy. The interest you're paying is just like insurance. So you have a reserve if something goes against you. Um, but if you wait till you need the money, when your profits have kind of eroded a little bit, when your cash on hand is a little bit tighter. It, then it's harder to get the money that you would have gotten six months ago. Banks don't want to lend to people that need money. They want to lend to people that don't need it. Um, and a lot of the alternative lenders in the e-commerce space have really been tightening up lately. And so what you'll see is uh, it's it's been it's just much harder to get money now than it ever has been, in my experience. And so if you're in a good spot, go get money right away. So what what, what kind of reserve should companies have in terms of cash? So. Typically, you know, I would say between three and six months operating expenses is a good amount of reserve. Um, today, if you can have 12 months, uh, that's would be better. 
So personally, like my business, we have 12 months uh, cash reserve and it's it's way too high in a normal economy. But because there's so much uncertainty, uh, because you, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen, have a longer reserve if you can. Um, but, you know, six months would be OK, but it's still I mean, you know, even we don't expect to see the economy turn around in most places until the end of next year. So, you know, between six and 12 months is my, my best recommendation. Okay. So in terms of, I mean, you say, so inventory is the thing that you think that people spend too much money on. So how would you recommend um, ensuring that you, you more controls would you put on inventory? Yeah. So one thing people worry about is selling out. And if you're an Amazon uh, seller, it's it's a bit of a different conversation than if you're not. So setting that aside, with Amazon, if you run out, your listings go to shit. So we have to be careful there. Um, but if you're a you know Shopify uh, retail, um, I would consider uh, forecasting in such a way that you might sell out of a core product or 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 a product. Um, and and I say that because we don't know what's going to happen for growth this year. What we do know, though, is if you have inventory that's old, that's sitting on the shelf, your money's just tied up. You can't do anything with it. And so I would try to order less. Every time you order, try to order just a little bit less. Um, and you can always reorder or pay a little bit more for it each unit, but just don't have... I mean, I wouldn't have four, five, six months sitting on the shelf if you don't need to have that. Um, I know some people have issues where they're buying from China and they have to pay a deposit and then four months later, they have to, you know... and so those things aside, I'm just recommending people just to order less. Be okay with selling out here and there. Um, watch your your customer acquisition, customer behavior like a hawk, and see if you can use that information to kind of help you dictate how much you should be pay, you should be buying. The other thing is, um, with inventory, uh, ask your supplier for terms if you don't have it already. So. Um, in a lot of Chinese suppliers, you'll have to pay 30% down payment, 70% uh, on shipping. Uh, I think most people should just take nibbles. So when I say nibbles, what I mean is you ask for small things that are easy to give. So for example, I'm not going to go to my Chinese supplier and say, hey, I know I pay 30% deposit. Can I pay 10? No, I'm going to say I pay 30. Can I pay 25? Six mm -hmm. months later, I'm going to say, can I pay 20? Then I'm going to go, okay, now that I'm paying 20 on that last payment, the 70% can have a terms on that payment or can I split the payment to 35 and 35 when it gets here. So go to your suppliers, ask for nibbles, small things. One other thing, if you have a domestic supplier, um, especially if they're a larger supplier, one thing you can do is offer them a little bit extra for longer terms. And I had success with this with an American supplier that I was using. Um, we did you know five, 600 grand with them every single year. And I went to them and I said, hey, what if I pay you a percent and a half on top of the invoice for 60 day terms up from 30? And they said yes within a few hours. Um, so there's a number of ways you can manage the drag on cash flow from buying inventory. And those are just a few of them. Okay. So what tips do you have for optimizing cash flow? Yeah, there's a few. There's a few. Um, so, you know, we talked about supplier management. Uh, that's one. So, Talk to your suppliers. You can ask for discounts. You can ask for terms. Um, you can ask to reduce deposits. That's huge because it's for a lot of people, that's most of what they spend their money on in a year is inventory. So anything you can do to reduce the dollars out on inventory at any one time is important. Um, the other thing I would say to do is, you know, obviously look at your overhead, uh, especially right now. Uh, if you're not very profitable or not profitable, uh, I would suggest making a plan to get profitable within the next six months. Um, do it quickly. So um, when, you know, do you have a fancy office? Yeah, go, you know, move out of that office space, kind of reduce overhead wherever you can. Sometimes that means reducing headcount as well for people that aren't core to your growth plans. Um, other things that I would say to do is, uh, you know, we mentioned lending. So go get money now. Um, if you don't have, if you have, Six to 12 months reserve, great. Maybe you don't need it. If you don't have six to 12 months reserve, build some reserve with uh, with some debt longer term if you can. But go now. Don't wait. Mm -hmm. 
other things we can do um, are make a plan. So that's the biggest one, right? Is making a plan for how you're going to use your money this year. Make a cash flow plan. What are you going to receive each month? What do you have to pay out each month? And look at that plan all the time. When you're going to make a decision, open the plan, plug the cost of that decision into the plan. Can you afford it? What does it do to cash flow? Does it hurt your reserve? Um, those are the biggest things that are going to help you is, is by looking at your cash flow plan all the time. That's probably the number one, actually, is anything you're thinking of doing, any cost you're thinking of incurring, open up the plan, drop it in the plan, see what it does. And, and of course, you know, the big one is, especially today, every dollar you spend, make sure it has a ROI. Don't be spending on stuff that you don't need to spend on right now. Okay. So would you say that, I mean, because we, we, my retail business, we got some um, inventory management software. Do you think that is a, yeah. a good thing to invest in? Yeah. So uh, I work with the company that uses Finale. Um, it's, you know, not the best probably by any means, um, but it's good. It helps us understand how much we have on hand, how much we might use, uh, manages costs. That's another big one. I mean, some people don't have a handle on their costs. And so these platforms can help you do that. Um, I like inventory management software where they make sense. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So how can it, what, what sources do you, uh, are good sources of funding for e-commerce businesses? What would you recommend? Yeah, so sellers funding is is a really good one right now. Um, they offer terms between twelve and eighteen months long, and so that's some of the longer terms in the e-commerce uh, lending space. I mean, you know, if you can go to your bank and get a line of credit or a term loan, obviously go to the bank first. If you have a good, if you've been profitable for a couple of years, if you have a good relationship with your bank and you have decent credit, that's where you should go. It's the cheapest money you can get. You can get it long term. That's what I would do. Okay. Um, Barring that, or in the US SBA, in Canada, BDC, uh, in, in I know the Wales has a development bank, and I think there's one in a London development bank or England. Oh, there's UK various bank. schemes, yeah. Yeah. So anywhere, anyone where there's a government backed lender, go to those and get the longest term loan that you can. Um, from there, you know, I would look at sellers funding. Sellers funding works in the Canada, UK, and the US. Uh, they, are, uh, they have a great team um, and they're very responsive and they move quick. It's good money. So I'd go kind there. What kind of percentage they charge? Uh, 15, yeah. Okay. So it, it's it's high, yes. Um, But in terms of the e-commerce alt lenders, it's right on par with, with what's out there. Uh, better terms, honestly, though, than some of the things. Are, like Shopify, for example, can be up to 30% APR. Nice. Um, and so it seems it's a, it's a better loan than Shopify, hands down. Um, You know, from you know, seller's funding. Now you're looking at the, you know, there's a, there's a universe of other lenders out there. Settle.com, they will pay your supplier's invoice and you will repay them in 90 days. So it helps so you to extend. Okay. Yeah, you can come Invoice financing. For a second. Invoice financing, yep. Yeah. It's a good one. Uh, PayPal Capital, UK, US, Canada is a good one. Uh, their APRs end up being like 10%. And about nine, six to nine month term usually, um, even though it's flo floating payments. But PayPal Capital is one that I recommend. Um, you know, Shopify, Clearco, when you have to try to stay. What about Amazon? Payments. Amazon, they have a funding. Is that expensive? They do. Yeah, they do. Uh, I, last one I checked was could have been twelve percent APR, fifteen maybe. Um, but my experience is they they give a little less than the others. Uh, mm -hmm. just from what I've seen. Um, but I have someone that used them. They were happy. We'll use them again, probably, I'm sure. Um, I mean, you know, it, you, you can check with the, some of the marketplace uh, letters as well. So what I mean by that is you go to Swoop, uh, Swoop Funding or Swoop Capital. You work with one account manager there. That account manager goes out to a bunch of e-commerce lenders for you. So you're dealing with one person, but they're helping you find uh, a lender. So Swoop is someone that I would that I would recommend. Uh, Lever in Canada, L-E-V-R. Uh, they're another good one as well. Um, all these people are ex-bankers and you know that kind of thing. And so they know what bankers want to see. They help you put all your information, all your packages together, and they send proposals out to a bunch of lenders on your behalf. So I've used people like that with great success. Okay.
So look, I think that, uh, you know, 2023, it's going to be a shit show, not to put too fine a point on it. What do you think? What are you, what's yeah. your tips for, what are your tips for surviving 2023 other than building a bunker in the back garden? Yeah, a hundred percent. It's going to be brutal. Um, what I would say 2023 is conservative is the word. Um, profitable is the other word. You know, uh, if you're under 10%, profit i would do whatever you can to get above that number um if you're not profitable uh you know if you're not profitable and you're not venture funded be profitable as soon as you can in my view um you can be profitable at 500 to 750,000 a year if your margin if your gross margin is between 15 60% you should be able to make a profit below that revenue you're still building your business and finding product market fit and all these things and so I, I wouldn't expect everyone to be profitable but if you're above 500 you can be profitable so you might need to move back to your garage uh, you might need to get rid of some of the support staff that you thought you needed but get profitable as fast as you can um, lenders are not lending to people are really not lending to people without that are not making this is a profit right now so if that's you you're going to have a hard time getting money um, um so that's the number one is, is find a way to get profitable, reduce your costs, increase your margin, because when you have net profit, you have a buffer against issues. If you have no buffer, that's just a problem. Like there's just no wiggle room for you if you don't have profit. So get profitable, be conservative is the number one thing. Um, some companies are in a great position this year going to 2023. What I would say to them is if you have a cash reserve, if you're profitable, great. This is the time for you to take market share. So make some plans to make some growth investments. Be conservative with them still. And when you make your plan for growth investment, what I want someone or whoever's listening, what I want you to do is plan out your investment, people, marketing, inventory, whatever it's going to be. Map out what the expected returns are going to be and when. And lastly, mark out when will you know this is not working and when are you going to pull back? So have those trigger points set in advance. So let's say, you know, month one, two, three is heavy investment. We should start to see some return month four, five, six. So what if we don't see the return? What costs are we going to cut back in month four? What costs are we going to cut back in month five? Cause the investment didn't work. So I would do those three things in advance. What are you going to do? What's the cost? What's the return? And what are you cutting back? And when if things aren't working, that's the biggest thing. Okay, cool. That's all good advice. So, what do you do? Last question. I like to ask a fluffy question at the end. Sure. What do you do? What do you do when you're not thinking about cash flow? I do mixed martial arts. Any particular mixed martial arts? Is that beating the shit out of out of your opponent? Uh, I usually get the shit beaten out of me, but yes, we try. Yeah, so I do both jujitsu and muay thai, kickboxing, um, and uh, you know, really helps me unplug. Stop. You're really flexible. Thinking. Can you can you do overhead kicks? Can you can you well I'm less kicks. flexible, less flexible than some, more flexible than probably most guys my age, I would say. Um, but I, I have a hard time kicking people in the head, but I can kick to the body and, uh, you know, but. but uh, okay, gosh, you don't mess with you. No, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, I, I like it most of all. It's, it's really fun. And oddly enough, it's just a really nice community to be a part of. Everyone's so fun. <laughs> you think it might be the opposite. But you're not, you you're think not, it would be the not. opposite. Yeah. <laughs> But it's very chill, people. Excellent. Look, lovey, thanks very much for your advice. And it's been very interesting. Yes, of course. It's so great to be here. Okay. Thank Where can people so find yeah. you online? Yeah, look at LinkedIn. You know, Matt Putra on LinkedIn. Uh, you could also check out my website, 8x.co, E-I-G-H-T-X dot C-O. Uh, LinkedIn, I'm very active. So if you have any questions, just DM me. Super. Okay. Cheerio, Matt. Bye-bye. Thank you, Trevor, so much.